historic moment is at hand in Atlantic City. Yes, the crowning moment for the 52 lassies competing in this year's Miss America title. Striking beauties all, they're down to the last strikeout in the World Series of Pulchritude. The spectators give them all a big hand, and the judges are busy scanning the lightsome lovelies from our good neighbor Canada and from most of our own 48 states. For the winner, fame and fortune will smile. The judges take one last look. They pick the winner, 18-year-old Jacqueline Mercer of Litchfield, Arizona. Crowned by last year's Miss America, she's the smallest winner in the history of the contest. And meanwhile, over there at Asbury Park, some of the prettiest wives and mothers in all the land are vying for the Mrs. America title. Miss or Mrs., the only difference between them seems to be the latter have husbands already. Who sure can pick them? Yes, sir, it's a fair turnabout when America can discover Columbus. The big town's prize bride makes her bid but misses. The winner and Mrs. America for 1949 is Mrs. Frances L. Cloyd of San Diego, California. The champion little woman of them all. And Hubby says three cheers for the best in better halves. This newsreel has brought you many spectacular presentations from the four corners of the world. But few have been so full of drama as the Tacoma Bridge disaster in 1940. Here on the site of the span which crashed only a few months after being opened to the public, a new bridge is born. The narrows of Puget Sound are again crossed by the third largest bridge in the world. Remember the terrific disaster when the original span fell, a victim to a gale which tossed the high-flung structure into an engineer's nightmare? A slashing, smashing wind tore down the channel and transposed the roadbed and its supporting cables into a swaying horror of tortured, crashing destruction. After years of planning, the new bridge is larger, safer, and free of the defects that caused the original crash. Towers over 500 feet tall, a modern miracle of man's ingenuity. At Milton Airfield, near Bristol, England, the world's largest commercial airliner is ready for its first flight. 130 tons in weight, with a wingspan of 230 feet, the Brabazon First, as she's called, gets buttoned up for her first venture into the unknown. There's her test pilot, Bill Pegg, 43-year-old veteran, who decided to take the Brabazon aloft after successful taxi trials yesterday. With jet propulsion almost ready for commercial transport, the Brabazon is obsolete even before she flies. But as a flying laboratory, she'll furnish vital data for newer and faster airliners of the future. She's airborne after a run of only 500 yards. The British look to the Brabazon to point the way to supremacy in commercial aviation.